MIT Technology Review is a magazine wholly owned by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, but editorially independent of the university. It was founded in 1899 as the Technology Review, and was relaunched without the in its name on April 23, 1998 under then-publisher R. Bruce Journey. In September 2005, it underwent another transition under its then-editor-in-chief and publisher, Jason Ponton, to a form resembling the historical magazine. Before the 1998 relaunch, the editor stated that, "...nothing will be left of the old magazine except the name." It is therefore necessary to distinguish between the modern and the historical technology review. The historical magazine had been published by the MIT Alumni Association, was more closely aligned with the interests of MIT alumni, and had a more intellectual tone and much smaller public circulation. The magazine, billed from 1998 to 2005 as MITS Magazine of Innovation, and from 2005 onwards as simply, published by MIT, focused on new technology and how it is commercialized, was mass marketed to the public, and was targeted at senior executives, researchers, financiers, and policymakers, as well as MIT alumni. In 2011, Technology Review received an UTNE Reader Independent Press Award for Best Science Technology Coverage. Topic History. Topic Original Magazine, eighteen ninety nine to nineteen ninety eight. Technology Review was founded in eighteen ninety nine under the name The Technology Review and relaunched in 1998 without the in its original name. It currently claims to be the oldest technology magazine in the world. In 1899, the New York Times commented, We give a cordial welcome to number one of volume. I of the Technology Review, a quarterly magazine relating to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, published in Boston, and under charge of the Association of Class Secretaries. As far as makeup goes, cover, paper, typography and illustrations are in keeping with the strong characteristics of the institution it represents. This magazine, as its editors announce, is intended to be a clearing house of information and thought. And, as far as the Institute of Technology is concerned, to increase its power, to minimize its waste, to ensure sick among its countless friends the most perfect cooperation. The career path of James Ryan Killian illustrates the close ties between Technology Review and the Institute. In 1926, Killian graduated from college and got his first job as assistant managing editor of Technology Review. He rose to editor in chief, became executive assistant to then President Carl Taylor Compton in 1939, vice president of MIT in 1945, and succeeded Compton as president in 1949. The May 4, 1929 issue contained an article by Dr. Norbert Wiener, then assistant professor of mathematics, describing some deficiencies in a paper Albert Einstein had published earlier that year. Wiener also commented on a cardinal's critique of the Einstein theory saying, the pretended incomprehensibility of the Einstein theory has been used as capital by professional anti-Einsteinians. 
Without prejudice to the cause of religion, I may remark that theological discussions have not at all times been distinguished by their character of lucidity. The Historical Technology Review often published articles that were controversial, or critical of certain technologies. A 1980 issue contained an article by Jerome Wiesner attacking the Reagan administration's nuclear defense strategy. The cover of a 1983 issue stated, "...even if the fusion program produces a reactor, no one will want it," and contained an article by Lawrence M. Lidsky, Associate Director of MIT's Plasma Fusion Center, challenging the feasibility of fusion power which at the time was often fancied to be just around the corner. The May 1984 issue contained an expose about microchip manufacturing hazards. In 1966, the magazine started using a puzzle column started in Tech Engineering News a few months earlier. Its author is Alan Gottlieb, who has now written the column for more than 50 years. As late as 1967, The New York Times described Technology Review as a scientific journal. Of its writing style, writer George V. Higgins complained. Technology Review, according to then editor Stephen Sick Marcus. Subjects its scientific contributors to rewrite rigors that would give fainting spells to the most obstreperous cub reporter. Marcus believes this produces readable prose on arcane subjects. I don't agree. In 1984, Technology Review printed an article about a Russian scientist using ova from frozen mammoths to create a mammoth elephant hybrid called a Mammontelephers, apart from being dated April 1, 1984. There were no obvious giveaways in the story. The Chicago Tribune News Service picked it up as a real news item, and it was printed as fact in hundreds of newspapers. The prank was presumably forgotten by 1994, when a survey of Opinion leaders ranked Technology Review number one in the nation in the most credible category. Contributors to the magazine also included Thomas A. Edison, Winston Churchill, and Tim Berners Lee. Topic: <laughs> Relaunch, 1998 to 2005. A radical transition of the magazine occurred in 1996. At that time, according to the Boston Business Journal, in 1996 Technology Review had lost $1.6 million over the previous seven years and was facing the possibility of folding due to years of declining advertising revenue. R. Bruce Journey was named publisher, the first full-time publisher in the magazine's history. According to previous publisher William J. Hecht, although Technology Review had long been highly regarded for its editorial excellence, the purpose of appointing Journey was to enhance its commercial potential and secure a prominent place for technology review in the competitive world of commercial publishing." John Bendit replaced Stephen J. Marcus as editor-in-chief, the entire editorial staff was fired, and the modern technology review was born. Boston Globe columnist David Walsh described the transition by saying that the magazine had been serving up old 1960s views of things, humanist, populist, ruminative, suspicious of the unseen dimensions of new technologies", and had now been replaced with one that, 
takes innovation seriously and enthusiastically. Former editor Marcus characterized the magazine's new stance as cheerleading for innovation. Under Bruce Journey, Technology Review billed itself as MIT's magazine of innovation. Since 2001, it has been published by Technology Review Inc., a non-profit independent media company owned by MIT, intending to appeal to business leaders, editor John Bendit said in 1999, "...we're really about new technologies and how they get commercialized." Technology Review covers breakthroughs and current issues on fields such as biotechnology, nanotechnology, and computing. Articles are also devoted to more mature disciplines such as energy, telecommunications, transportation, and the military. Since Journey, Technology Review has been distributed as a regular mass market magazine and appears on newsstands. By 2003, circulation had more than tripled from 92,000 to 315,000, about half that of Scientific American, and included 220,000 paid subscribers and 95,000 sent free to MIT alumni. Additionally, in August 2003, a German edition of Technology Review was started in cooperation with the publishing house Heinz Heise circulation of about 50,000 as of 2005. According to the New York Times, as of 2004 the magazine was still partly financed by MIT though it is expected to turn a profit eventually. Technology Review also functions as the MIT Alumni Magazine. The edition sent to alumni contains a separate section, MIT News, containing items such as alumni class notes. This section is not included in the edition distributed to the general public. The magazine is published by Technology Review, Inc., an independent media company owned by MIT. MIT's website lists it as an MIT publication, and the MIT News Office states that the magazine often uses MIT expertise for some of its content. In 1999, the Boston Globe noted that, apart from the alumni section, few technology review articles actually concern events or research at MIT. However, in the words of editor Jason Ponton, our job is not to promote promote MIT, but we analyze and explain emerging technologies, and because we believe that new technologies are, generally speaking, a good thing, we do indirectly promote MIT's core activity, that is, the development of innovative technology. From 1997 to 2005, our Bruce Journey held the title of publisher. Journey was also the president and CEO of Technology Review. Inc. Editors in chief have included John Bendit, 1997, Robert Buddery, 2002, and Jason Ponton, 2004. The magazine has won numerous folio awards, presented at the annual magazine publishing trade show conducted by Folio Magazine. In 2001, these included a Silver Folio Editorial Excellence Award in the Consumer Science and Technology magazine category and many awards for typography and design. In 2006, Technology Review was named a finalist in the General Excellence category of the annual National Magazine Awards, sponsored by the American Society of Magazine Editors. On June 6, 2001, Fortune and CNET Networks launched a publication entitled Fortune CNET Technology Review. MIT sued Fortune's parent corporation, Time, Inc. for infringement of the Technology Review trademark. 
The case was quickly settled. In August the MIT student newspaper reported that lawyers for MIT and Time were reluctant to discuss the case, citing a confidentiality agreement that both sides described as very restrictive. Jason Kravitz, a Boston attorney who represented MIT in the case, suggested that the magazine's change of name to Fortune, CNET Tech Review, a change that occurred in the middle of the case, may have been part of the settlement. Many publications covering specific technologies have used Technology Review as part of their names, such as Lawrence Livermore Labs' Energy and Technology Review. AACE's Educational Technology Review, and the International Atomic Energy Agency's Nuclear Technology Review. In 2005, Technology Review, along with Wired News and other technology publications, was embarrassed by the publication of a number of stories by freelancer Michel Delio containing information which could not be corroborated. Editor-in-Chief Ponton said, of the ten stories which were published, only three were entirely accurate. In two of the stories, I'm fairly confident that Michelle Delio either did not speak to the person she said she spoke to, or misrepresented her interview with him. The stories were retracted. Modern Magazine, 2005 present On August 30, 2005, Technology Review announced that R. Bruce Journey, publisher from 1996 to 2005, would be replaced by the then current editor in chief, Jason Ponton, and would reduce the print publication frequency from 11 to 6 issues per year while enhancing the publication's website. The Boston Globe characterized the change as a strategic overhaul." Editor and publisher Jason Ponton stated that he would "...focus the print magazine on what print does best, present ing longer format, investigative stories and colorful imagery." Technology Review's website, Ponton said, would henceforth publish original, daily news and analysis whereas before it had merely republished the print magazine's stories. Finally, Ponton said that Technology Review's stories in print and online would identify and analyze emerging technologies. This focus resembles that of the historical Technology Review. Without evident comment, the July-August, 2017, issue revealed a shift in top personnel, with Elizabeth Bramson Boudreau listed as chief executive officer and publisher, and David Rotman as editor. Every year, the magazine publishes a list of the ten technologies it considers the most influential. Topic. Annual lists Each year, MIT Technology Review publishes three annual lists Innovators Under 35 formerly TR35 10 Breakthrough Technologies 50 Smartest Companies Innovators under 35 MIT Technology Review has become well known for its annual Innovators under 35. In 1999, and then in 2002, 2004, MIT Technology Review produced the TR100, a list of 100 Remarkable Innovators Under the Age of 35. In 2005, this list was renamed the TR35 and shortened to 35 individuals under the age of 35. 
Notable recipients of the award include Google co-founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin, PayPal co-founder Max Levchin, Geekcore creator Ethan Zuckerman, Linux developer Linus Torvalds, BitTorrent developer Bram Cohen, MacArthur Genius, bioengineer Jim Collins, investor Micah Siegel and Netscape co-founder Mark Andreessen. The list was renamed Innovators Under 35 in 2013. Topic: Recognition. In 2006, Technology Review was a finalist in the National Magazine Awards in the category of General Excellence. In 2010, Technology Review won the Gold and Silver Prizes for Best Full Issue of a Technology Magazine for its November and June 2009 issues and the Gold, Silver, and Bronze Prizes for Best Single Article in a Technology Magazine for Natural Gas. Changes the Energy Map by David Rotman, Prescription, Networking by David Talbot, and Chasing the Sun by David Rotman in the Folio Magazine Eddie Awards. In 2007, Technology Review won the Bronze Prizes in the Folio Magazine Eddie Awards in the categories of Best Issue of a Technology Magazine and Best Single Technology Article. That same year, TechnologyReview.com won third place in the MPA Digital Awards for Best Business or News Website and second place for Best Online Video or Video Series. In 2008, Technology Review won the Gold Prize for the Best Issue of a Technology Magazine for its May 2008 issue, the Gold, Silver, and Bronze Prizes for Best Single Articles in a Technology Magazine for the Price of Biofuels by David Rotman, Brain Trauma in Iraq by Emily Singer, and Una Laptop Poor Nino by David Talbot, the Gold Prize for Best Online Community, and the Bronze Prize for Best Online Tool in the Folio Magazine Eddie Awards. That same year, Technology Review won third place in the magazine Publishers of America MPA Digital Awards for Best Online Videos. In 2009, Technology Review won the Gold Prize for Best Online News Coverage, the Gold and Silver Prizes for Best Single Articles in a Technology Magazine for How Obama Really Did It by David Talbot and Can Technology Save the Economy? by David Rotman and the Silver Prize for Best Online Community in the Folio Magazine Eddie Awards. In 2011, Technology Review won the Silver Prize for Best Full Issue of a Technology Magazine for its January 2011 issue and the Gold and Silver Prizes for Best Single Article in a Technology Magazine for Moore's Outlaws by David Talbot and Radical Opacity by Julian Dibal in the Folio Magazine Eddie Awards. That same year, Technology Review was recognized for the best science and technology coverage in the UTNE Reader Independent Press Awards. In 2012, MIT Technology Review won the Gold and Silver Prizes for Best Full Issue of a Technology Magazine for its June and October 2012 issues, and the Gold and Bronze Prizes for Best Single Article in a Technology Magazine for People Power 2.0 by John Pollock and The Library of Utopia by Nicholas Carr in the Folio Magazine Eddie Awards. That same year, MIT Technology Review won the Gold Prize for Best Feature Design for The Library of Utopia by Nicholas Carr in the Folio Magazine Aussie Awards. Topic. See also 
Citizen Science the OED cites an article from the MIT Technology Review in January 1989 as the first use of the term citizen science. <laughs> 